you do influence your dog with everything you do. So no wonder it looks like they're morphing into you. I've got six dogs. They're always late and they're poorly <laughs> yeah. prepared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Sab Cohen Hatton and I'm a neuroscientist specialising in animal and human learning mechanisms. I'm Jamie Penrith and I specialise in canine predatory behaviour and I'm also a former police dog handler. And I'm Danny Wells, a dog trainer that specialises in unwanted behaviour. Every week we sit down to talk about the latest research in canine psychology. And more importantly, how you can apply it to your own dog to get to know them a bit better. Welcome to the Dog Scholar. Go Guess what? You've got a question! Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ready for my question? I'm always ready for them questions. Good. Let's do it. Do dogs morph into their owners? Mm, that depends. Oh, I, thought, the... I didn't think that was the end of the question. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were going to say, yeah, yeah. So, owners what? <laughs> no! Do, <laughs> do dogs morph into their owners? Yes, do they do morph they into their, like owners? their owners? Given we know that they can read us really well, does our personality affect theirs? Do people select dogs that, to match their personality type? Because like lots of people might think, oh, I'll go and get a dog that's an outdoorsy type because I'm an outdoorsy type of person. Or, yeah, yeah. You know. Does someone get a couch potato because I'm a couch potato? <laughs> 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 Do you spend so much time together that you just become one? You gel know. with your dog. I think dog. it sounds lovely, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It does sound lovely, doesn't it? Does, it does, doesn't it? It does. It does. I'd, li I'd live in hope. And do you change to be like your dog? Or does your dog change to be like you? What came first, the you or the dog? No, that doesn't, no, make doesn't really sense. work, that, does no, it? it doesn't. No, I tried, no. I tried. I think we should keep that in, though. I think we should keep that in. <laughs> I'd get heartburn if I was eating on a ball off the floor. <laughs> I'd get terrible heartburn, but I... Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. reach my own bum to lick it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God knows you've tried! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm speaking oh. from experience. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you now, as a witness in the past, like, you're getting eight for effort. It wasn't, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't a throwaway comment. Yeah. Wow, I knew you guys were close. <laughs> yeah. You've got to have science to uh, back it up, right? There's actually some evidence that it might. There's a study. And it is a good study. And it took 78 people and their dogs, and the owners took a personality test. And then they and their dogs took part in an experiment. Well, they had to do two really simple things. Right, the first one was to go into a new room that the dog hadn't seen before and tell the dog to sit in the middle of the room. Now, I did say sit. No. <laughs> I saw you looking at me then. Yeah, we got back, the dog was gone, but there was a turn yeah. in the middle. <laughs> Basically, the experimenters were looking at how long it took the dog to sit to obey the command and how much time they spent looking at their owners. Now, the second thing that they had to do was while the dog was sitting by the owner, a stranger had to walk over to a ball, pick it up and tell the dog to look and then walk over and hide the ball behind a screen and then walk over to the dog and show it its empty hands. Essentially, they were interested in how long the dog took to look at the stranger and how long it would take to stop looking at the ball. Yeah. Right. Now, they were looking to see whether dogs owned by people with a particular personality trait would behave in a consistent way. And believe it or not, they found that they did. They found that your personality can affect the way that your dog behaves in a predictable way. Neurotic people who've got a tendency to be quite anxious and insecure would give more commands to their dogs, both verbally and with their hands. They were moving their hands around, telling their dog to sit and waving their hand around, for example. Now, their dogs took much longer to obey. Extroverted owners who were very sociable and affectionate also seemed to have extroverted dogs. They'd look at the owner much more and they were less interested in less social behaviours like looking at the ball. So they preferred their owner to the ball. Dogs with agreeable owners who are quite soft-hearted and trusting. A bit like us, we're all lovely and soft-hearted. An soft -hearted agreeable trusting, owner. We? What an yeah. agreeable owner. Uh, yeah. An agreeable what does that owner. Mean? It means you just what? go 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 with anything you told. <laughs> 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 it, it means you never signed up for a study. You just said you're doing a study anyway. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> but their dogs spent more time looking at the ball, and I would guess they're looking at it quite expectantly because if they're quite a, quite a soft agreeable person they're probably giving in more and giving them the reward more dogs weren't morphing into their owners no. dogs are associative learners they make associations between things they link things together that they experience so they're learning from what you do all the time and how you do it so yeah your personality definitely influences your behavior and that's the thing that drives what your dog expects of you. Mm. Can I ask? A lot of the, the you can ask. Media, you can ask. Can I? You can ask. You can. Oh, yeah. Yeah. thank you. You can, you may. <laughs> I'll get ask. back in my box after. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, 
break. The, my, my, my. <laughs> Where's the value in me saying that it's that the dog is morphing into um, their owner or becoming something beyond what they are? In in furthering our understanding and the welfare. If I'm sat there with my dog and I'm thinking, you know, uh, you know, th this relates to you, mate. How does that? How, how would that research, those findings, what they're, what they're trying to prove, benefit that, do you think? Yeah. You know? well, I think it's... I've got a red heron. Uh, have you? A red yeah, heron? I've got a red heron. Red heron. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I have... Would you, would you like some cream I, I, for that? I, I'm going to watch Jamie's eyebrows go up when I open this, OK? You ready? I, I, it's I, not the first I, time I've heard you say yeah, that, yeah, is yeah. it? I am. It's not my eyebrows. Show us your heron. <laughs> I have five dogs. All of them respond to commands, but all of them in very different ways. Their own personalities come through. If I tell, mm -hmm. if I tell Wade to down, Australia will shake. He downs that fast and that hard. <laughs> Logan will be a bit slower. He's a he's a bigger dog. Ralph does it, but he gives me this look like he doesn't really know that he's alive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Lenny's still in the learning process, and Flint's just slow and laid back. So you know. He's, they're not they're not responding as I would. Whereas if anyone who knows me as an individual, even when you're speaking to me, I'm very fast and animated. I'm actually making a really concerted effort to be nice and mellow here, so you can understand what I'm saying. But that's the way I am in everyday life. The what, what was the one? The erratic owners. The dogs were struggling. Neurotic. Un, un, neurotic, the neurotic owners. owners. They the took longer was, to obey. Yeah, they took longer to obey. And the, the owners were giving more commands and yeah. gesticulating more. Yeah, as well. and there's, there's loads of things without going, you know, to dog trainery. There's loads of things that take that take play a part in that. And we we've mentioned before overshadowing. Yeah. If you pair in physicals with verbals, dogs are going to struggle to understand the verbals. And neurotic people. A physical people, command and yeah, a verbal. And a verbal command. command. So something command the dog together. hears and something the dog sees. Sees. At the they're going to likely to see what's, what do what they're seeing. So if hands are moving left, right, and centre because you're you're a bit more neurotic, but you're given a command, then they're going to struggle with that. But I'm quite consistent in my commands, mm. and I know this because I video me work for for yeah. me, for me job. And you, Yet, you do it every day. Every day, it's, yeah, it's every your, day. So all my mother. dogs do do the commands, but they all do them in very different ways. They're not mimicking me mm. per se. You know what I mean? If I, if I'd say one of them would be closer to me, it would be Wade. Everything's yeah. fast and dynamic all the time. But they all they all still respond instantly to commands. Yeah. But the um, or requests, they all um, <laughs> they all respond, but in very different ways. So if if there was any sorts of um, morphing going on, surely they would all be the same, wouldn't they? Well, do you know that's a really interesting one. It would be good to do this mm. in multi dog households, wouldn't it? And see if you've got those common traits across all of yeah, the dogs yeah. in the household. But of course, then you might have one dog that yeah. you interact with more or less, which might influence yeah. it as I, well. I, when I read that title, I instantly think, nah, not at all, because when do dogs morph into their owners? The last thing I need is a dog trying to bite me on assessment and the handler. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> all at the same time, juggling plates everywhere. Yeah. Do you have to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got six dogs. <clears throat> They're always late and they're poorly <laughs> yeah. prepared. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> poorly. Case, case, case closed. <laughs> yeah. 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 So they laugh at inappropriate jokes. Could do better. Yeah. <laughs> they always could do better. Yeah. Nice, but yeah. could do better. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, but I think it's just that you have your own time zone, Jay. Yeah. Hey, bro, Jay, bro. Jay, one of them struggling with one eye as well, aren't they? Yeah, so they are. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, so how about that? If you've got a dog that morphs into it, for anybody who doesn't know, so I've got an issue with one of my eyes, right? And there's going to be a, so there's sight issues going on with one of my eyes. And one of my dogs happens to have a damaged eye. She's actually blind in one eye, but always keen to go one better. She's sim uh, since lost a leg as well. So she's now a, you know, a tripod with, with a single eye as well. But you can't go much better. So she's better. winky and wonky. Rather, you can't yeah. go much She's called Tink Wink. You know, Aww. it should have been Wink, shouldn't wink it? Winkabell. Yeah, Winkabell. But it, it, um, you can't go much better than morphing into a human. Yeah, yeah. By, oh, by, yeah. by actually, yeah, you know. Yeah. 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 All the other dogs say what's going on there. She just she just points at Jamie. Obviously, when she points, she falls over because there's not another leg to stand on. Oh, she, she responds Aww. late when they ask yeah. the question as well. Do you, what's interesting, Jamie, do you see something similar? Do you see different different styles in which your dogs perform amongst them having six dogs? Uh, if I were to say, you know, I don't see myself with my dogs, again, uh, five Labradors and a Labrador point across. I don't necessarily see them as being 
morphing into me or I don't see them as being a, a yeah. canine reflection, a doggy reflection of myself. I like what that, that, that breed of dog, that, th those types of dogs are. I like the, I like the sort of like relatively easy going yeah. um, temperament of them, personality of them, if you like. I like that they're affectionate. Yeah. I've nurtured the affectionate yeah. nature of that as well. So it's not something that just naturally yeah. even is. The, even through your breeding programs, yeah, you, yeah, you, know, through, you yeah. know what you're looking for. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I do. But, but I wouldn't say, you know, they're, they're each uniquely individual as well. Yeah. You know, even though they are from the same family line and live in the same home. But don't forget, you guys are both professional dog trainers. Yeah. You've been training dogs all your working lives. So presumably you're responding in a way to teach your dog yeah. things that's really There's consistent. consistency there. It's not and gonna be the same for a- Yeah, going back you know, to the, um, the, the, the neurotic um, owners. If they are neurotic, then chances are how they implement any sort of training to their dog is gonna be neurotic. Yeah. And neurotic doesn't create cons consistency in behavior. So it would be very easy for an owner to go, look, they're just like me. Mm. I, I, I can't get work this out and I can't do yeah. this as well. So it, it's it's easily understandable. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's understandable that an owner could think that. Yeah. And, and obviously with the extroverted owners as well, they're more sociable, they're yeah. more affectionate, they're going to interact but with if their you're, dog But if you're an extrovert and you are sociable and you are interacting, then chances are your dog's with you when you're doing that yeah. as well. Yeah. So they're getting a lot more social exposure. You're doing it and witnessing dog. social norms. The they're learning what's socially normal interaction, yeah? They're witnessing this and being exposed to this a lot more than someone who is, say, introverted. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That. I don't even exactly. necessarily know that it needs to be, like when you're talking about people like that, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't even need to be the implementation of training with them, just yeah. the way in which people live, live with their dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. You can have a chilled out person yeah, with yeah. a chilled out dog and yeah. just yeah. the way that they're, you know, you don't generally tend to find, I don't generally tend to find somebody who's like really yeah. relaxed yeah. Yeah. with a dog that is neurotic, if you like, yeah. and you don't generally tend yeah, to find yeah. somebody who can't sit still and they've got to do this, that, and then yesterday, you know, with a dog that is chilled out. I, th I do think, I think personally that it's more a, a case of people selecting breeds or individual dogs, yeah. you know, to suit their circumstances. I think when people go, say for example, into, into um, uh, rehoming centers and things like that and go window shopping for the one that would suit them best, mm -hmm. I think you do that, you almost like match the dog that you think, somebody may try and do it for you, but nobody's gonna do it as well as yourself, are they? You try and match the dog that you feel a connection with, that you feel would fit your lifestyle. And I think a large part of that is probably selecting a dog with the same, if you like, canine equivalents of your your yeah. personality. And go, yeah, and going off the, um, they'll piggybacking off the extrovert comments, likewise, an introvert is less likely to put themselves in social situations, meaning when they take the dogs out on walks and then come across other dog and dogs and dog walkers and the dogs like, are a little bit unsure, freaking out, it's very easy to go, look, they're just like me, they don't cope well, well in crowds and things, mm. but you've not really put that time into no. teaching them how to cope in those crowds no. and situations. Uh, or... I mean, don't forget, these are trends as well. Yeah, this yeah. isn't a rule, this yeah, is yeah. a trend. Yeah, yeah. So generally speaking, when people are looking at their personality inventories and then looking at the way they're interacting with their dogs, these are trends that they, they seem to be finding. You know, and for me, it's so clear. It's not that the dog is turning into you yeah, at, at all. all. Yeah. They're reading you and responding in a way that's consistent with the cues that they're taking from you. They're mm. just responding to you. Cues they're learning being... it. The cues being the signals that you might right. be giving off. But even when people are selecting breeds, you generally, people will generally look through a breed profile or various breed profiles and select characteristics within that breed that will match. Or they should do. Yeah, you they, know, should, very, they really very should do. But, sure. but nine times out of ten, the process always starts with aesthetics, don't they? I like the look of this and then read about it and then hopefully you make the right choice with oh, what's good for your lifestyle and not, yeah. I want this, even though it's a lunatic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It didn't with me, so with my dogs, the way that I ended up with the breed that I have, the Mexican hairless, is because my husband is severely allergic to dogs. And hairless? And, ha yeah, and hairless. And hairless. <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely morphing into... Yeah. Yeah, 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 I yeah. could not live without having a dog and it turned out that a rare breed was cheaper than a divorce, which is why yeah. I was <laughs> 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 oh, oh my. <laughs>Welcome back, it's time for some practical advice on what we can do to make sure that our personality isn't adversely impacting our dogs. So practical tips are quite simple on this, you know, all you need to do is understand that dogs don't generalise behaviour like people. The lesson that you teach in the living room might not necessarily apply on the field outside. 
Jamie? When you're training a dog, okay? So, but and by training, I don't mean take it, go into a training class necessarily yeah. or go teaching out specifically. Dog, yeah, yeah you're, teaching your dog. But, but when people say you're doing that all the time, and you are. Yeah, your you're 24-7. Yeah, your yeah, behaviours yeah. do, if, if you're with them 24 yeah. your behaviours do influence the beha yeah, behaviour yeah. of your dog, even though you're unaware of it. And isn't you know? that just where the pet owner starts to go wrong? Where, where, you know, they, they go, I'm going dog training today at 7 p.m., yeah. but really, you're in dog training 24-7. Yeah. Everything you're doing with your dog is, is influencing your dog's choice. Yeah. yeah, just like your dog is training you 24-7, yeah, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the yeah. way that not you Not me, Sam, not me. <laughs> <laughs> how how many people now. get dragged to the training class, go in, do a perfect round, and then get dragged home? Uh, <laughs> that, is my, that, is, that is my ick. That yeah. is my ick. I, I'll set it up sometimes and go, right, thanks so much, guys, have a good weekend. Stop! Yeah. <laughs> Everyone just gives a giggle because they know what's coming. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is why you're telling me they're great on class and they're not outside because yeah. you're switching off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. It's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. Dogs are so contextual with the way that they learn. They, are. they, they don't know? generalise as, as well as, as people. We no, need to make the, the concerted effort to teach them that. You know, this that we've learned here, it applies here, here yeah. and here as well. Yeah. If you don't do that, they'll fill in the gaps with what they're genetically inclined to do. There is so true. And you're behaving all the time, aren't you? So yeah. they're reading you all the time yeah. and they're reading you in lots of different contexts, lots of different places all the time. So no wonder it looks like they're morphing into you because they've generalised the thing that they've learned really, really well just by the very nature of us doing it all the time. Which is that in the majority of instances, people are inconsistent. Yeah. You know, if you want an inconsistent dog, if you want a dog that yeah. doesn't always come back when you call them, doesn't always sit down when you tell them, doesn't always, you know, whatever it happens to be, being consistent in the way that you yeah. that you train it, you know, there's there's a morphine, there, yeah. there's a definite morphine yeah. that you you can it's back true. up with yeah. animals. Yeah. My dog dogs, never, you know. and in comes yeah, yeah. the dog nevering like yeah. it's never, yeah. 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 never done that before. <laughs> Apart from the last time that it never done it before. Yeah. So yeah. 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 People, yeah. people constantly, you know, making requests, but there's nothing to enforce them yeah. them requests. Yeah. 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 You know, for example, recalling your dog when you know. The dog comes back maybe two out of five. Yeah. And now you just keep recalling when nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you just had your dog on a long line and you recall your dog, reel them in, give them a reward. That's yeah, a really absolutely. good point because so many of us talk to our dogs in the house anyway, don't we? And we'll, yeah. you, we'll, we'll almost talk to them like they're, they're people. But then mm. the, the kind of the words that you're using become devalued. I it? talk so, utter shit to my dogs. Like literally, like if, a bit if, like us then. Yeah, no, no, worse, <laughs> worse, worse. I, I make up stuff. It's all for my own amusement. They don't, I didn't even look Give at me. Give us an example. What do you? I mean think that? I've told you. Like one, one of my dogs, Ralph. I'll literally just walk past them, and for some reason, I'm like the Ralph, the Ralph's there. That's the fairy in. I just start <laughs> talking <laughs> shit, but it entertains myself. And you know, if you could put a camera on me, it is non-stop entertainment. I literally Aww. just talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's about being self-aware because if yeah. I have a dog for the intensive training. I'm very, very methodical in, in every interaction I have because yeah. I know how much I'm influencing yeah. the dog. But that's true. And, you know, names like that, they're pet names. It's fine to use them. But if you're saying to your dog, come on, come, come yeah. on, yeah. come on, get yeah. off the sofa, yeah. come on. Yeah. But then you, come, you want to happens. use... Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to use come to get your dog to come back to you when you're outside yeah. in the park to recall them. You've used yeah. it in all these other ways yeah. so that you've used the yeah. same thing that they've then yeah. paired. So, And that's a really good point because lots of people do struggle with calling their dogs back, don't yeah. they? Yeah. So, you know, there is something about being really aware of yourself and your personality can drive that, can't it? Yeah. If you're really extroverted and you're speaking to your dog yeah. all the time uh, or you're really neurotic and you're speaking yeah. to your dog all the time, I'm sorry, that might then make you say those words yeah. more, which no wonder they're then taking longer to obey, as we yeah. saw in the because study. Yeah, it just becomes background yeah. noise yeah, and it's exactly. got nothing, nothing attributed the, 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 to it. It's interesting that you make the point about con the, the context and how you're using those words and repeating the same words again and again. Dogs struggle to generalise information like, like people do, and not just that. I like to describe it as they see the world in a very black and white way. The grey area in the middle would be, come on, come on, you're going to be late. Oh, come on, you're going you're to sort this. That would be the grey yeah. area that we live in. Dogs are... Come means come back to you in any given context. I'm yeah. away from you. Nothing else. Yeah. Nothing else. If yeah. you want to say heal, that means I walk by your side. But don't start. Come on yeah. over here. Well, do you walk know, with me. You know. You know what I mean. Which is what most people, which yeah. is what doing most people do, and they don't know do what they're doing. Well, yeah. I've started teaching Luther Hebrew, so not like literally. Yeah, not yeah. like he goes, wow. I, I didn't even know he could speak English. English. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is morphin. No, no, that I, is morphin. He can't write it yet. He's outside in the car. He's in. He's not. He's outside the car. I'm going to stick around the Louis Vuittons. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, no, no. I've started teaching him his commands in Hebrew because I'm so fed up of like Mike and Gabby. Bless them, my family, as much yeah. as I love them. They say things to him which confuses the commands that I've yeah. taught him. So, you know, he'll be he'll be stood he'll be set stood, he'll be sat on the chairs and they'll want him to get off and they'll go down and he's kind of like then trying down. to lie down and they're like, No, down, down and they're getting really cross with him. I'm like, You're messing yeah. with the You mean down. Stop it. it doesn't yeah. mean that to him. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I thought, do you know what? I'm just gonna cut out the middle person on this. Yeah. And so I'm teaching him all of, all of his commands in a, in in Hebrew. To to a degree, right? So to a degree, and I know that this is something that a lot of people as a trainer and you'll have the same, Danny, is um, certainly if you get a couple turn up, right? So, uh, you know, w w whatever that couple is turn up and they want to work with you and one person does one thing and they say to the other person, you need to be consistent. You need to listen to what he's saying, right? So we need to be doing the same thing, singing from the same hymn sheet and you yeah. know, say, saying the same words. And I will always say it doesn't, it, is, it isn't quite that. It isn't quite the fact that this word, as long as you say this word and you say this word, you will have the, your different way of saying that word. You will have your way of saying that word in the way that you project it, in the tone and everything else. What matters from the dog's point of view is what does that mean to me? Yeah. Yeah. What do I get from yeah. that? So one, one part of a relationship may say, come, and the dog says, yeah, 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 and they come in, they give them everything that the dog likes, right? Um, or they say, come, and the dog doesn't, they go, doink, on a line, they, hey, I meant it, come on, yay, and they come back. Whereas the other person says, come, Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? mean? And nothing's actually uh, the same word. Yeah. All the, so, mo all the most frustrating one is come, come, come. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but it's yeah. not the actual the actual word. When you say it, the dog will still respond to you. I'll just learn you're irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. You're irrelevant. Yeah. And then you're you get frustrated. Yeah. yeah. What actually matters for the dog is what happens as a result of the command that's given, yeah. the instruction that's given, what does it mean to yeah. me? You the know, outcome. is, it, is yeah. it a valuable? What is the outcome? What is the consequence? Yeah. And by making that consequence valuable to our dogs, yeah. okay, so making it something that to them is relevant, not necessarily that yeah. we consider to yeah, be relevant, that we can ensure that the, the instructions that we are given, the information that we are communicating is consistent, yeah. is clear, that the dog follows through and that the relationship yeah. flourishes as a result. Yeah. So, so piggyback off that, do not give any sorts of commands to your dog that you can't actually enforce at that time. For example, you've worked really hard with your reward-based training, teaching your dog to down. On command in that house, your dog downs. You're now driving in the car on the way to your dog training and you see your dog have a little yip at a dog outside the car and he's in the boot and you shout down. The dog's not gonna understand the same down in that particular context. So what you're actually doing is devaluing the command that you've just spent all this time oh. reinforcing in the house. So you're basically making it less likely to happen. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah you, you decrease the likelihood of it happening. Yeah, the dog's yeah. gonna it's gonna the actual command's gonna lose value. Yeah, and so, in a situation like that, actually, you're likely to have auditory exclusion. So because yeah. the dog is around, now you've got to compete excited, motivated as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, then it's what happens at that time is dogs are less likely to be able to hear things. It kind of yeah. shuts off or ignores its hearing because it's so aroused it's experiencing stress and when I say stress I don't mean necessarily bad stress but excitement you know they're aroused yeah, any sort of arousal yeah Jamie I was just going to say exactly the same when teaching people you know when I'm teaching yeah. people to recall to get their dogs to come back when they call them what they get really aroused uh, <laughs> no they just shut down I'm training, speaking Jay. to them and they just shut down because of the <laughs> <laughs> stress yeah. that I'm causing the poor person <laughs> but no but it's like um you know they will say to me um Okay, what happens, this is great, you know, I'm, I'm training the dog here. What happens if I just want to take them for a walk and I don't want to do any training? You know, I just want to go, perhaps I haven't got some time, I just want to let them out quickly, take them down the road, take them to the park or whatever, quick wee before I go to work or whatever it happens to be. Quite simply, don't use the command yeah. that you would use yeah. when you are training. So if I'd normally say, you know, whatever, come, pop it, whatever your name might be, don't, don't shout come, call the dog's name. Yeah. By all means, yeah. because most dogs you will yeah, hear yeah. their name heard in different contexts where they learn to ignore it. Equally, on the flip side of that, don't let your dog's name be your way of recalling them, of calling them back, but instead choose a different word yeah. or a signal like a dog whistle, which means nothing on its own. Yeah. And associate, form an association between when you hear this whistle, this food is delivered. When you hear this whistle, this toy is delivered. When you hear this whistle, ignore it. There's the doink on the long line or you know yeah, some yeah. kind of interaction to be able to say, no, you've got to turn and come back towards me. The whistle means something. And if I want to take you quickly, don't take the whistle. Right, okay, so we've got a, a listener question. And the listener question is, whenever I wash my dog and I put her on a towel to dry, uh, dry herself, she goes absolutely, absolutely mental. <laughs> she gets the zoomies, runs around the house, returning to the towel periodically to rub herself dry. Why is that? 
because she's wet. It sounds like a sort of like a lateral thinking question, <laughs> it does, doesn't yeah. it? It does. I'm not sure. Because allowed. she's wet. <laughs> because she's wet. She well, she goes right, to the she, towel to write a Never mind that she dries herself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Go> Clever dog. <laughs> I, 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 We're still drying our seven-year-old. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you get dogs that run around and and just literally drop onto their back backs and rub themselves across the backs, yeah, jump yeah. back up and run around again just yeah. from a state of it's, it's, excitement. It, yeah, isn't yeah, it? it's a state excitement. It's a self-rewarding yeah. behaviour. I would yeah. I would suggest that the sort of like rubbing with the towel and the you know the the bathing experience itself is just exciting dog and the dog's mm. running around excitedly yeah. and diving in on the towel and whizzing around on it is part and parcel yeah. of that and they experience. just thought that's pretty good i'm going to repeat that behavior yeah, again it's quite yeah, a, yeah it's quite enjoy a, it. yeah enjoy so, it sorry you know. there's no more complex answers to that but it is what it is at least <laughs> yeah. the dog enjoys it yeah, yeah. yeah that would be yeah. Uh, yeah that would be that would be my takeaway yeah. from that do you ever get the zoomies when you're enjoying yourself oh I, I generally if when i get out of the bath I run around the house and then periodically <laughs> throw myself on the floor, rub along it, and get up I, and I, Don't you wait for there to be nobody, a towel put down? No, nobody cares. I'm enjoying myself, so they just think that's good. I often get the runs, but it's a very different type of runs. <laughs> yeah. And then I apologise to my kids' mates as I'm running past them. Yeah, yeah. Carry on. I don't think my that's a my good rules. thing to do. <laughs> OK, coming on to a second question then. I find that cats only meow because they're trying to communicate with humans. Is this the same for dogs? Yeah, they, they, I've, I've, I've never heard a dog meow. No, I've never heard a dog meow myself. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Does it purr? I love that. I'm, do you know what? I'm looking in the camera now. I'm actually pissed off that I never thought of saying that. Yeah. <laughs> beat me to that. And do you know what? Come I'm, more, me. I'm more pissed off. It didn't beat me. It didn't even register. It didn't even register. Do dogs can vocalise to try and communicate, and it usually comes from a place of frustration. Yeah, because mine speaks Hebrew, don't forget. Yeah, yeah, don't forget, yeah. So, for an example, you know, if you've got the, um, if you've got a water bowl in in a regular place and it's empty and you're not aware you're watching the telly, some dogs will bring the bowl in and show it to you. Some dogs will come in and start barking and spinning and looking at you and then running out and running in. They they communicate in many different ways. It doesn't have to just be vo them vocalising. They can they can they can go out of the way to tell you what they want. I've but never meowing. Some, I've got some um, genuine yeah. sort of like anecdotal experience of this uh, with my own dogs and the communication and the way in which even the bark, and anybody who's got dogs would be able to, if you pay attention to the fact that, you, you know, how your dog's communicating with a bark, and there are different barks for different situations, mm, right? Definitely. So you have your guard, guard in barking, where yeah, you, yeah. someone turns up and get the woo 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 yeah, yeah. that sort yeah. of thing. Suspicion. You know, <laughs> throwing itself at your living room yeah. window or whatever, when anybody or anything happens to be going back past it. Then you'll get, if I look at Bonnie, who's my older Labrador, when she's, as she's got older, she's, you know, a little bit sort of like deteriorated in her, uh, her sort of like mental capacity, I guess. But when she wants attention, if she's left on her own, it will be a, a tempo of row, row, pause. Yeah. Row, row. Yeah, yeah. Pause. And you, you'll hear it. And I've heard other people's dogs do it as yeah. well. So it's that double, that double, um, somebody's dog somewhere, somewhere double is probably wolf. saying there's a bloke outside wants to come in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's left on his own. But that, <laughs> that sort of like double bark is communicating something different. And it's a really, this would be something that would be fascinating to look really at would. as well, wouldn't it? It's there, different vocal communication. There is, there, the is an, um, there is a study somewhere, I've, 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 I've brushed past it ages ago about that can start kicking in when the dog becomes seven and eight years of age. As with age, they can start to become a bit more vocal over things and do that sort like of even even rhythm though, barking. You know? Throughout her entire <laughs> yeah, yeah, lifetime, perfectly yeah. happy it, being It's fine, and then, and then it starts to happen. It also said in there that this it can happen with um, irrational men fears. On Twitter. Irrational, yeah, yeah. <laughs> irrational fears. Irrational fears around that age, and it's to do with age. And, yeah. Yeah, I've seen it's, it. it's, I'll have to try and find that. Yeah. I think anybody... Well, it's a good job we have a science-based podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That would be a really, I think it would be a really yeah, interesting yeah, one and, yeah. and for other people. But just yeah. with, you know, without linking to age, I think we've all witnessed dogs, you know, attempting to communicate when they, when they want something particular. You know, they, yeah. again, they're, they're aware of space and time when the time they usually get fed. My dogs will always be fed at half past three. Every, sorry, it's a lie, half past two. It's every day and I still get it wrong. Oh. At half past two. And I guarantee you, at 20 past two, woo, woo, yeah. woo, woo. Or every time. Similar sort of thing. Yeah. Is that the noise you impression? make when you're feeding them? Yeah, yeah, just, it, it just passes the time. They know it's feed, it's, it, it, this is when they get fed. Yeah. And then and then that will get a little a little bit more prominent as the uh, the bowl's going and stuff like that. Yeah. It's interesting as well, isn't it, how we, you like anybody who hears the dog barking, generally you can tell the difference between, you know, you don't need somebody like, like me to say that, you can tell the difference between, 
I know they're barking for such and such, or, or oh, somebody's turned up, or go and check that that parcel hasn't arrived at the front because the dogs, the way the dog's barking compared to other barks that the dogs might give that don't give you think, what do they want? Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's a different yeah. sort of uh, yeah. communication exactly that they're giving. That. But great questions. Good Again, questions. We love Absolutely. questions. Give us more questions, please. Mm -hmm. We want them. And if you do want to give us a question, Jamie, how can they do it? We are at Dog Scholar Podcast on social media. Or alternatively, you can get in touch with us by email at podcast at thedogscholar.com. Woohoo. Danny, I'm feeling icky. Okay, we've got the first ick from Katie from, I fucking love this, <laughs> Penis Stone. <laughs> Sounds like something that you'd need to get removed. Does anyone? Yeah, no, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peniston is pronounced. Oh, is, is it? it? <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, uh, Peniston. It's pronounced. It is actually Peniston. spelled penis stone. I know. <laughs> well, that's probably why well, they pronounced well, 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 it penis differently. Stone. Okay. It's a bit like well, the I... hyacinth bouquet. All right, either way. Thing, Katie, at, Katie's ick is when people get high energy dogs only to put them in daycare for most of the week. Yeah, oh. I think I think that's that's yeah. more of sort of like a welfare issue than a Yeah, than you have to be aware of when you do when with things like this, you know, if you've got a really high energy dog, day daycares, you know, they're quite busy, they're not gonna be able to give that dog the individual time and chances are that it that sorry that it needs, chances are it's gonna be left to run around with a load of dogs and the worst case scenario is can create a variety of different aggressive responses to different dogs. But the best case scenario you can hope for is you're going to charge up the best competing motivator in that dog's world and you're not going to be able to get the dog back when it sees a dog on a field. Right, yeah. so let it play with other dogs and it's going to always want to play with them. Yeah, that's dogs. it. Well, you know, in, in, in excess, so, you know, if you, if you do lead a really busy lifestyle or you're always on the move because you're energetic, you're probably best not choosing that dog to line with your personality yeah. because the two are going to conflict. Yeah, or get a cat. Th yeah, yeah. Say, th that said, you know, I suppose if you're in the situation where you've already got a dog like that and you do have to do some something for it, yeah. better that than left at home or not? Yeah. It depends on you. It really depends on how long you're out of the house for, doesn't it? Fair yeah. Enough. If you're out of the house for a long time, I am um, I would I would it's gonna cost you a bit more, but I would suggest that you look for someone who can provide a bit more one to one, you know, um dog centered time for yeah. your dog. Yeah. Like a dog walker or something. Yeah, exactly. yeah, like a dog walker, you know, if you're out for eight hours you can get a dog walker to break that time up. Yeah. Um as long as you're providing fulfillment morning and in the evening for your dog. Brilliant. Yeah, okay. That's yeah. so important, and, isn't it? Yeah, and the next stick we've got Lindsay from the Wirral and she says he slash she will be better off the lead, just let him off. Now that, that kind of implies that you've got a dog kind of reactive on the lead and they'll be okay when you let yeah, them off, it doesn't, does, it? doesn't it? And my attitude with this is always, if it isn't right on, on the lead, it's not gonna be right at, at a distance. If, that, if you're referring to recall, that's a definite no-no, So you're isn't basically it? saying if you've got, you know, she is, is basically yeah, saying... Yeah, yeah, Lindsay, Lindsay. So Lindsay's basically... Well, certainly. Lindsay can be a guy's name as well. Don't be so sure. Well, no, because it was on my social media and I've seen the profile picture, so we're not okay, making assumptions. This enough. is factual. OK, 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 <laughs> fair so, enough. Yeah, I'm Lindsay. just, I'm just yeah. standing up Devil, for the Lindsay yeah. guys out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Robbie Lindsay. That, there you go, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Lindsay Hoyle, Speaker of the House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but basically, so you're... you're, you're basically, well, Lindsay is saying yeah. that just because you've got a dog or if you've got a dog that you're struggling with, the answer to resolving that struggle Absolutely isn't not. just listening to someone in the park yeah. who says, let them off, they'll be yeah. all right. And you know, you know, we don't doubt that someone said that before, you've let them off and they have and been, it's fine. been fine. Yeah, but yeah. the catastrophic outcome of if you let that dog off and there is a serious dog fight is just not worth yeah. the risk, is and it? And you're the one that, that, at the end of the day, the buck stops with yeah. you, you're the you're one responsible, responsible for, your for dog. being responsible. Uh, yeah, and absolutely. some people might be referring to barrier frustration, where they're getting frustrated because they're, yeah. you know, they're constrained. Yeah. yeah. But, well, if, but that's not the answer then? No, yeah. it really isn't. No, the answer isn't. is to it condition really the dog to not feel frustrated on the lead because, yeah. you know, they might well, if in a, in a distraction-free environment, they might be frustrated. You let them off the lead and they're fine. But if you then apply that to with dogs present, you've now just had a dog that's hit the pinnacle of arousal and now you've let it off the lead. That's how a dog fight starts. Yeah. Best way to deal with that? Train it. Train your dog. Train, Train, it. Train, Train your it dog. Well. Train your dog. Don't tolerate behaviour that you're not comfortable with. Absolutely. Tolerating. Amazing. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. If you've enjoyed this episode, then please share it with a friend. And if they don't like it, maybe their dog will. Over to you, Danny, for a final thought. So we've established that dogs do not morph into their owners any more than the owners morph into the dog. You would not be trying to lick your balls on the couch, because if you did, you'd probably fall off. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fair enough. Any balls, don't bother so... trying that. Don't, don't bother try and lick anything, you'll fall off. <laughs> <laughs> See you next week.